This has haunted me for a long time. I was about 19 or 20 at the time, and I was living in Savannah, Georgia. I drank a lot, had a crappy fake ID, I worked this terrible job as a grunt laborer. The kind where you go to those temp labor agencies like AB Body or Labor Finders. I'd show up at 4 in the morning, work until 5 p.m., and drink myself to sleep after only taking home maybe $60 for the day. I was supposed to go into work this particular morning, but I decided to skip. It's a labor agency, they'll just find somebody else. I call the girlfriend and tell her I want to go to the beach. I had already started drinking. She comes over. I hop in my big ugly van, pick up some rods, and head to the beach. I decided to go drink across from the beach at this little bar. This is where the story gets kind of interesting. Shortly after ordering my drink, I get this weird feeling. I become hyper aware of my surroundings. The door opens and I see this guy walk in out of my peripheral vision. There was a seat between me and my girlfriend, but the bar was empty at like 9 in the morning and he could literally have sat anywhere. Yet he chooses to sit right between her and I. Then he starts doing his thing with his fingers. The bar top was reflective and he takes his fingers like two legs and starts just walking with them, skating with them on the top of the counter. This isn't something out of the ordinary. But I took notice because when I was in school, I did that all the time. I pretended I had rollerblades on my fingers and that I was skating around my desk. I hated school and I was always distracting myself, so I become kind of mesmerized for some reason. That's when he looks at me and in this weird kind of dramatic or Nordic accent, he says, I noticed you're a man who pays attention to detail. I'm always a man who pays attention to detail. Now before I continue, I have to describe this guy. He had this short spiky hair that was bleached at the tips, kind of like the late 90s style. He had really expensive clothes on, like a nice Prada leather jacket, nice designer jeans, really nice boots. He seemed like a kind of guy with awesome fashion sense and a really distinctive taste. I always remember this because I think to myself, some weird homeless crazy guy couldn't have afforded those clothes. Anyway, the other thing that stuck out was his eyes. They were piercing gray. It reminded me of like a husky's eyes, but his pupils just stayed this disturbing pinpoint size. They were just extremely small, which caused his look to be kind of terrifying. His teeth were normal, right? But not at the same time. I don't know how to explain it. They were sharper than they should have been, as if they were filed slightly. His hands were normal, but his fingernails were slightly long and pointed, as if he deliberately did it. He kept licking his teeth too, as if he were salivating. The thing about this guy is that you looked at him and everything seemed normal, but off at the same time. So you question if you're crazy for thinking this. This guy then begins to start talking about the relationship between me and my girlfriend, but really strangely, he talks about how beautiful she is, and how I should pay more attention to her. I was kind of a dick to her. Shortly after he began talking like this, I had this almost knowing feeling coming over me. Like I knew this guy was not human. I woke at my girlfriend and say, you need to leave. She just kind of looks at me like she knows to. Without a word of protest, she gets up quietly and leaves. Later I learned that she went next door to get a coffee. That's when this guy literally says to me, with the utmost confidence. You were supposed to go fishing today. He points at the beach across the street. If you had, I would have drowned you in that ocean. And I shit you not, he fucking hissed at me. For some reason, this overwhelming calm had come over me. I just ask, who are you? He answers back in this crazy guttural language, like Akbak but it was really long. It sounded Arabic or Hebrew or something. I just, for some reason, without skipping a beat, and I have no idea why I was so calm to this day, asked, say it in a way that I can understand. He says, you can call me Jimmy C. I jumped off the San Francisco bridge years ago, and we've been watching you. From there on and out, he never referred to himself as me or I but only we. The conversation became very strange after this. He was saying things like, we see you taking a bath, we wish we could to feel, 
the warmth of the water and the comfort of the stream and other stuff. He kept buying me drinks too, specifically whiskey sours. It was like he had an endless supply of money. He smoked marble ultralight cigarettes. After I don't know how long because I lost sense of time, I kind of told him I'm going to leave. I walk next door, I get my girlfriend and she's stone silent. We start driving, don't say a word. Then I just ask, do you know what that was? And she just says, that was a demon. This girl had parents who were scientists. She was very analytical, completely non-religious. And that was the first thing she said out of her mouth. Now I didn't say this part before because to me this was the most important aspect of the story. So I'll say it now because it's what happened after that screwed me up for fucking years. The last thing this Jimmy C guy said to me before I left is this. Look at my car. I looked outside, I see one of those newer Volkswagen Beetles. It was white. What does the license plate say? I look at the plate and it literally says fierce. He looks me dead in the eyes and says, the next time you see that, I'll be driving a black Mercedes, and the license plate will say Utopia. Stupid, right? That night I was still calm, I don't know why. I felt like that one guy on office space after his hypnotherapist died right in front of him, and was just weirdly zen. But my girlfriend started having terrible nightmares of this guy's head, just started at her in her dreams. Weeks went by and that's when the encounter started affecting me. I found myself becoming paranoid about the black fucking Mercedes. Every black car I saw, I checked to see if it was a Mercedes. If it was, I'd immediately look at the license plate. I started doing this when I was watching TV or movies as well. I couldn't stop. Now I'm going to fast forward a bit. About 10 years go by. I'm 29, so this is just recently. And in silence when I'm alone. When I'm drinking, I often think about this encounter. I still look at black Mercedes every time they pass, but I'm not so much anxious about it anymore. As curious, and I remember that my girlfriend at the time kept a journal. By now, I'm pretty sure that I'm insane. Maybe I was drunk. Maybe I'm not remembering anything correctly. After years to try to find an article of Jimmy C that committed suicide on the San Francisco Bridge, looking at black cars and so on, I feel like I've grown out of it. Yet still, I had to know. So last year, I tracked down my ex-girlfriend. We ended on bad terms. I found out she's a school teacher in Wisconsin, has married a woman, and is actually trying to have a child. I figure she's not going to talk to me, but I send her a Facebook message anyway. I ask her if she can find the journal entry from that day, because I have to know if her events match up with mine. Sure enough, she had it, and it contained even more detail than what I remembered, because she had literally written it at the coffee shop next door right after it happened. Here's what she sent me. Notes on what happened at Tybee Island, Georgia, on the first Tuesday in December 2005. Drove there during the day and the sunshine was getting me down. Kept thinking about how earlier I had gone to his house after waking up there. And he woke up early, took a shower, came back, and woke me up. Acted very sweet. Then I went home, took a shower, Came back to go with him to Tyree, and he'd gotten drunk already and was teasing me. Being sort of an ass. I even threatened to go home once, but I stayed, feeling that I really should go to Tybee with him. But I was excited to show Tybee to Will during the day since I knew it well and he'd never seen it. He talked about how it all reminded him of his childhood as we drove through the salt marshes and over bridges. The sun, the palm trees. I'd grown up in fog, got to Tybee and he wanted to get a couple of beers even though we had rum in the trunk. Well, really the back of the van. The first bar we went to carted him and so we left, remarking that everyone in the place had given us strange looks as soon as we walked in. Went over to Fanny's a couple of doors down, all in the area of the beach by the pier. I decided that I didn't want beer after all and told the woman I'd just like a glass of water. He had a PBR, only cost a dollar. Noticed the VW Beetle parked outside when I came in, but did not see Jimmy enter. 
He pointed out a man sitting one stool down from me, drumming his fingers strangely on the stainless steel bar, more like dancing with his nails, stretching his long fingers. Thought immediately that he was gay. He and I watched and talked in whispers about it for a few minutes before he, the stranger, spoke. He first talked about how I had noticed him dancing with his nails, then looked at his nails, surprised, and said they look like shit. I laughed, getting a weird feeling about the guy. He then spoke about how it's important to notice details and he likes it when people pay attention, that he pays attention to everything, that he knows that I do too. His eyes are blue-gray, he has blonde hair and a narrow pointed nose above pale lips that cover crooked teeth. Not very white, almost like fangs. His teeth are all I can look at until I look him in the eye, something I normally won't do until I know a person at least a little, and he seems to evade me. He asks if I love him. Without hesitation, I nod and say yes. He asks him, do you love her? And he looks uncomfortable, laughs a little bit, says, yeah, I guess so. Then the guy says that I am beautiful, that if he won't love me unconditionally, as I do him, someone else will. He touches my hair and says that I am a creature of God. He then tells us that he walked three miles up and down the beach and it sucked. Said some things about God's green earth. Told a story about a scorpion that asked a frog for a ride across a river who then stung the frog, told the frog it was in his nature, and then they both enjoyed their last minutes of life because they both would then die. He told him he knew him and kept trying to get to him through me. He'd say, I'm not hitting on your girl, but continually told me I was beautiful. He tried to piss him off, kept saying that he knew him, said he is in his room at night, he's what crawls on his back, told him his glasses were cheap that my glasses were perfect because I see through them rather than behind them. Then he said that I was perfection, that I was one step away from becoming myself. Earlier he talked about fashion, thought my glasses might be Armani, said Prada was his favorite person. When I noticed that his orange leather jacket had a red rectangle of fabric on the left breast that said Prada, he said to him that he knew who he was, to which he replied that he knew who he was. The stranger left to go to his car to get money for more drinks. He'd offered to buy us all a shot of tequila and already bought him a beer. As he walked out, he pointed to the license plate. His car was the white beetle outside. The license plate read fierce. While he was gone, he asked me if I knew who the man was. I nodded, saying I had an idea. Yeah, but you think you're crazy every time you think it, don't you? I was thinking the man was the devil or something close. When asked where he was from, he didn't answer. We thought he could have been from Tybee, but he said he didn't live there. Asked him where he lived and he just started talking about his other car, a Mercedes-Benz with a plate that said Utopia. Asked if he lived in his car. He said no. Utopia's doors are closed to me. He asked him where he learned all he was talking about. And he said he had lived in San Francisco, where he jumped off of a bridge and died. This is probably the single most frustrating and scary thing that has ever happened to me. I want to imagine it's just a normal crazy guy. But unless you saw it and felt it and heard him talk about all the little details of what you were supposed to do today when only you knew it. You just can't understand the impact of that. It's been 10 years and my only solace really is that my ex-girlfriend was there to corroborate. That communication where I reached out to her actually caused us to be on good terms again after a decade. It seems to have been something that bothered her just as much as it bothered me. And still to this day, even though I'm living 10,000 miles away in Southeast Asia, I can't stop looking for that car. I can't stop thinking about Jimmy C's twisted face. I wonder if he still crawls on my back. And if the fear I feel at night, often to where I have to drink myself to sleep or find a one-night stand so I don't feel alone, is him or them watching me.